Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a tutorial for you on how to get the best video quality possible on YouTube. A lot of other commentators ask me to critique their videos or they ask me questions and most of my question answering and criticism ends up being on video quality. At the end of the day, YouTube is all about video content and while audio is important, presentation is important and a lot of other things, people are watching the video. If your video is blocky, if it's blurry, if the colors are bad, if it's choppy, if it looked like it was recorded on a potato, generally speaking, people aren't going to like it. Even if it looks okay to you, it might not look okay to everybody else. So I'm making this tutorial on how to show you to get how, I'm going to show you how to get these video settings using the Elgato and Sony Vegas. There are other programs you can use. Adobe Premiere has the same options that Sony Vegas has, but it's in a different place, but I'm using Vegas because it's the simplest for me. It's what I use every day. And there are other capture cards other than Elgato that this will work with. This the process will work with most capture cards, but I go with Elgato because it has the very simple flashback recording or ghost recording. It has the highest bit rate as far as I know and it works with every program. Some of the other ones are proprietary and they have to do this and they have to do that. Elgato just pretty easy plug and play and go. So we're going to go over that and this is the standard Elgato upload. Like if you don't do anything to your video and you just upload it straight or this is what most capture cards will look like as a matter of fact. It's not really that great when this is my gameplay for comparison. You can see that there's a clear difference between the left and right side of the screen as far as color is concerned as far as bit rate. Well, actually I didn't alter the bit rate in the video. That'll be relatively similar. But as Especially with the frame rate, you'll notice a, a sort of smoothing or ghosting on the left hand side. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. That's probably the biggest problem with most people's videos. And I've wasted your time with the introduction enough. Let's get started. First things first, you want to make sure your console is in the right mode. I'm doing this with an Xbox here, but the same settings also apply on a PlayStation 3. You want to go to Settings, System, then you want to go to Console Settings, go to Display, and you want to make sure that your display and your HDTV settings are set on 1080p widescreen. 1080i is very bad. Never use 1080i. If you can't do 1080p, go 720p. If you're stuck using component cables instead of HDMI, you'll have to go 720p. But 1080p is preferred. Just make sure that your console is set up like that, and it'll be good to go. Go. The next step is to make sure your capture card is set up to record in 1080p. So here's my Elgato screen for capture. I'm going to go to settings YouTube success. That's my next commentary. Spelled it for you a little bit right there. I have flashback recording on so that I can do the ghost recording thing. And I always convert to MP4 because you don't necessarily want to deal with M2TS all the time. And uh, that's more or less good to go. You'll find some more options in the hammer and wrench section over here. I have my input device set as Xbox 360. I, if I was using PlayStation, I'd set it to PlayStation. I'm using HDMI input, not component cables. Expanded color range is nice. It'll make it a little bit more beautiful. And I'm running 1080p. I have my quality at best. If your computer is slow, if it's old, if it's struggling, you can crank the quality down a little bit, but I don't recommend it. I, prefer, I preserve my source source format, but I stretch standard definition. The st standard definition stretch is something I did with live streaming, so don't worry about that. There are some things you can do with the color right off the bat here. I normally don't adjust these here. I usually do it in Sony Vegas because I have slightly more control. I record in a very neutral color so that if later I want to use it for a montage or if I want to do something special with it, I can do all the color editing in post. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second, but we're all more or less good to go here. So I'll cancel out of this and you're good to record the ghost recording thing or flashback is this bar down at the bottom. You can just click it and drag it and you'll see that I'm kind of moving backwards and forwards in time. I just drop it where I want it, click, and then click, and it's trimmed, and it's done, and that's the reason I mostly use this capture card. Well, the Elgato setup was simple. Sony Vegas is going to be a little bit more complicated. First thing you want to do is import your media. So you want to go to File and then go to Import and Media, or you can just click on the icon with a similar name here that says Import Media. I've already got the directory in the folder picked, so I'm going to go ahead and import the video ga the, the game that you were just watching earlier, and I'll open it. Since I've already imported it, it'll be instantly, usually the first time you do it, it'll take a few seconds. Drag and drop into tracks. Do you want to change project settings to match? No, never do that. That is very very bad that will mess you up but as you can see it's not exactly as beautiful as I would like it to be there's some work that needs to be done so let's start with changing our project properties this is going to be very important for later so please pay attention your Sony Vegas is probably going to default you to some sort of 720p which is kind of weird we're going to change that to 1080p so that's 1920x1080 you can just put in custom the field order is none progressive that's good uh, one square frame rate 30 30 FPS is the standard for YouTube for which best Gaussian none uh, adjust to match blah 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 start all new projects with these settings I do change that because I don't like changing this every time I uh, turn on Sony Vegas it gets a little bit annoying and you can also give your render settings a custom name up here I, I just type mine in YouTube Driftor uh, settings whatever and I can just save it 
by typing in the custom name and clicking the save icon and I can hit apply and then every time I turn on my Sony Vegas this will be done or I can change it to something else if I need it. While this looks pretty good there are some more things that we need to do in Vegas. If you look at the preview window, you can see that my Peacekeeper is ghosting a little bit. And in some frames it ghosts, in some frames it doesn't. This gives it a really wonky kind of effect that you don't want in your video. To get rid of that, what you need to do is right click the video in the tracks, must click the video, not the audio, and you want to go to switches. From switches, you want to go to disable resample. Once you turn on disable resample, all the ghosting effect is gone. And now you have a smooth, smooth gameplay that'll always match that 30 FPS. That's probably the biggest take home from this tutorial because that's the most common problem I see. Next, we need to do a little bit of color correction because if you can see here, it's not the most beautiful of colors. It's kind of drab, kind of flat, but I set it to record it that way. I did it on purpose because I do get a lot of color data and a lot of color depth. I am partially colorblind, so I do struggle with this part a little bit, but the numbers help me the readout. So as you can see, not so beautiful. So I go to my video effects and I am in secondary color corrector. I built this effect for Modern Warfare 3, but it still works very well here in Black Ops 2. At this point, I just drag and drop in the video on the track but if you want the exact settings you can just copy them you can just pause the video and use these probably the most important part is the saturation as you turn the saturation up and down you'll see that the video will say amount of color changes drastically from black and white to almost eye burningly yellowy blues uh, the best saturation is you want to go a little bit over one because the way I told you to capture it's gonna be by its nature slightly desaturated and this is what makes the difference between the really gray gameplays that you see and the really bouncy see colorful ones that you see. Even if we followed all those other steps to a T, you can still screw this up by rendering it incorrectly. What you want to do is select all of the media, that's going to be important, just highlight all of it, just click and drag across the top, and then we're going to go to File and Render As. You want to go to Main Concept MP4, I, I skipped that little part in the tutorial here, but you want to go to MP4 Main Concept, and I have a tutorial already built for MP4 here, or Render Settings. It's uh, 1920 by 1080 baseline main, pixel aspect ratio 1, 30 FPS, this is all the same stuff from the project property so it's going to match very nicely you don't want to mismatch there but the important thing is that you want a variable bitrate mp4 select variable bitrate and put on two pass I run it on 28 being my maximum and 28 million and uh, 10 million being my average and I always render using CPU only it never crashes and you can hit OK and apply what it does with the two pass render it takes twice as long but it's kind of giving you an optimal render. It's going to render in a very high quality and a lower file size. So you're kind of saving on time if you have a slower internet speed. And I would just name it some file, whatever, wherever I save it to the desktop and hit render. It's going to take its sweet time and you want to render loop region only, especially if you've done some editing and you have some clips floating around. It's going to take its sweet time. I'm not going to show you a whole render here. It'd be super boring. It takes like an hour. But if you wanted to do 720p, if you're running maybe a different capture card or you want to do 720p for montages, uh, you can change your frame rate to 60 FPS because it's a little bit harder to slow down the 30 FPS. But you can go in here and uh, I built a similar one. I use 14 million for my maximum and 5 million for my average. It's a lower quality, but it gets the job Job done and it uploads really really fast. Those are my settings for Sony Vegas and the Elgato. Again you'll find the similar settings in Premiere and if you're not using the Elgato you can find similar settings in other capture cards. I can't tell you where they are because I don't use all of them especially not currently. I've been using this setup for quite some time now. It'd take a little bit of work to go back to the past and uh, that's more or less it for this tutorial. If you like my video quality if you think it's worth a flip then you can just go ahead and copy it. Uh, I would rather see you just copy my stuff and have the community have better video quality then I would hog it and keep some sort of competitive advantage besides other people showed it to me Bayesian Canadian showed me the uh, disable resample thing which probably helped my videos more than anything else that's all for this video I hope that you learned something useful I hope that you enjoyed it links to all of the other things are down there in the description if you're interested in it drifter out